Welcome to Markitecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology vendors. I'm Mike Shields, and I'm here with Nicole Pangas. She's the CEO of Ampersand. Hey, Nicole, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. No problem. So let's start with the big, um, important question. What does your company do? Uh, Ampersand is a media television company. Uh, We're owned by Comcast, Cox, and Charter. Uh, The company has been around since the early 1980s, and really the original premise of the company was to aggregate the inventory of cable operators across the country in order to make buying cable inventory easier. Um, The company has grown from that as a premise to include satellite and telco as well. Uh, So up until 2018, which is uh, when I joined, the company was um, effectively a, you know, a scaled player in national spot, which is multi-market um, linear television. In 2018, uh, when I joined, part of the reason I joined is um, the owners decided to add, not pivot, but add um, more advanced television offerings uh, into the company. Um, and they did this by incorporating their national addressable inventory as well as their uh, television insights off the set-top boxes uh, as part of their distribution into the company. Uh, And since that time, we've added the inventory of data and data of Altice and Verizon to the mix too. So now, um, you know, largely we sell the media across, um, you know, all the cable, telco, and satellite operators um, on the linear side. And then we've added the national addressable uh, and a bunch of streaming inventory as well to really sort of pivot the company into, you know, the new the new architecture of television, which is much more, more, much more data-driven and audience-driven than it previously had been. I wonder if you can maybe walk, walk us through a couple of different um, hypothetical examples of how, how maybe how someone you works with Ampersand that's more of a traditional spot cable advertiser and then maybe a, a good example of someone who's really taken advantage of all the data integrations and all the different inventory from TV to digital to whatever. Maybe you can give us a couple different examples. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give you an example. Um, so uh, let's say an auto company, right? A car car manufacturer. Right. So they have basically three ways that they buy television. Tier one would be national, like all the national um, networks. So that right. makes a lot of sense for them. That's how you get broad reach. Um, then there's tier two, which is what we do, which is multi-market regional. So that would be regional, um, you know, regional uh of the same auto brand, right? But you have regional dealers and you mm-hmm. might have regional dealers across multiple regions, right? And they want to do similar messaging because there's similar promotions and that sort of thing. That's where we play. Okay. And then tier three would be, let's say, a single owner dealership in a specific city, in a specific state. That's tier three. And an individual distributor that, um, you know, that has uh, distribution in that market would handle that. So we sit historically in that tier two marketplace. Um, and if I'm going to make it up, but let's say a an auto brand wanted to target New York, Boston, and D.C. as an example, they would come to us because we work with all the cable distributors that work that um, that are in Boston, all the cable distributors that work in New York, and all the, the cable distributors that work in D.C. And so you can do one buy through us, and we can actually basically spider out through our distribution to cover every single one of those markets with one media buy, as opposed right. to going through all the different ones, right? right? So that's the premise of the company. Uh, what we've has, now what we've moved into is tier one in auto, so the same brand can use us for national addressable, and the value there is you know there's there's a there's a fallacy now where national addressable is somehow sort of taking from national linear you know like traditional national buys. That's inaccurate, but what we're finding is that a brand should still buy national buys, but there's a place in which, and we're, I know we're going to do a demo in a moment, but there's a place in which the reach curve flattens out mm-hmm. after you buy so much national inventory. And at that time is where sort of the blunt force of national loses its value and national addressable, which is a more targeted audience-based buy, can actually increase your reach curve because we can show you 
at ampersand the households that you didn't reach, like low TV viewers as an example, and find those households. We call it an easy button. Right. But we actually know because of the data we sit on that we can reach those households. So you can get incremental reach. So it's, an, it's, it's additive to the buys that a brand typically is already doing um, in the national marketplace. So that's, a, that's an example of uh, you know, both ways that you can buy through us. One is that the more traditional piece, which is the multi-market, more blunt force, you could just do it based on geography, right? More traditional Nielsen GRP metrics, or we can do it through an audience as well because we built a platform mm-hmm. where you can actually select an audience to buy in that, uh, in that market as well. Um, and then you can do the national addressable um, piece, which is more kind of what would be considered tier one uh, buys on a national on a national scale. 